Antaniel Tulian Meldanin, and thank you once again for joining me. My name is Lord Aramil, and today oh, we've got a lot on our plate. So let's dive right into it. If you like this video, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and all the other forms that make me know that you really enjoy this and want me to keep going. Right. Let's dive on in. One of the first things that I wanted to go in and talk about is this room right in here. Uh, so last time, <clears throat> Over here, we built ourselves a nice little kitchen. Uh, I added a, oh, that's why it was weird. There we go, that's much better. Uh, a little bit clustered, but we'll get over it. Uh, but yes, I added a cauldron here for water, uh, which I have yet to actually add in, but we'll get there soon enough. Uh, this is all pretty much as it was last time, uh, though there are quite a bit more pieces of food. Uh, we have exotic meats and all sorts of lovely things. Have I? Yeah, I even got a pie in there. All right, but we're not going to talk too much about the kitchen. Uh, instead, we have the armory. Now, of course, this is still quite a work in progress. Uh, you can see that I've been down to Gondor recently and I, uh, no, of course not officer. I definitely paid for both of those suits of armor, I swear. Oh, we have this lovely set of Rohan, uh, what's this, Lebanon? No, Penisgelin, yeah. Uh, which is just another fiefdom of Gondor. Uh, Gondor has a lot of really cool armor sets, and I'll be collecting a bunch of them. Uh, let's see, it's Dalish, yes. I really need to... Ooh, that's disgusting. Alright, yeah. I'll have to uh, rebuild that set. Uh, over here, we have a crafting room. These are most of what I have. So we've got Hobbit. Got, let's see, Torathrim, yeah, Torathrim, Moradin, more Waith, more Waith now, that's right. Uh, let's see, Dorwinian, Rivendell, Galadrim, Wood Elf, Linden, of course, you've got your basic uh, crafting table, Ranger, Gondor, Rohan, Dale, we've got the Erebor and you know, kind of default Dwarven, and then the Blue Mountains. And then we have Dunland and Gundabad. Uh, there are a couple more evil uh, crafting tables, and I'll probably just shove them in this corner uh, just to have them. Uh, and then this room uh, will be our storage room. So this is where we'll put a lot of metals and woods. I think that's what I want to keep this room for. It's just metal and wood specifically, but we will see what all happens. Now, uh, I'm, a I'm actually recording this a little out of order, so you might be able to catch glimpses of, of what we're about to uh, get into. So we are going to raise up the rest of the walls uh, and work on decorating with pillars. All right, let's get to work. So today we're going to do something slightly different, as I'm going to be narrating this after the fact. Here, of course, we have building the main walls around and for the Great Hall. Uh, there's really not much to be said about this, except it took a lot of brick. Uh, I will show off that we've got this section out in the front, which many of you are probably wondering what that's all about. Uh, now that's for mainly decoration purposes. Here I'm running up. There we go. Perfect. Now, uh, the front decoration bit is to help uh, break up just the flat plane of the front of the building. Now we want to 
build this wall up, of course, to our other sections. Like I said, not a huge amount going on in this part. Uh, it is an important part, of course, and we bring up the walls for the, what is it, the south? Yeah, that's the south wing. Get a good look at the crafting room, the armory, this little hallway. Venus requ requesting some items. Uh, when you start one of these projects, you really don't think about how much uh, you're going to use in terms of materials. Uh, I kind of wish I had some way of counting. Moving over to the north edge, it's time to bring up these walls and really uh, help enclose the courtyard. This is also one of those uh, pretty simple parts of the build, even if Inguian uh, gets in my way occasionally. Uh, the real trick is to make the wall so it snakes around a little bit to keep us from just building another large box uh, while keeping it uh, straight enough that we will later be able to add crenellations. Uh, crenellations can be really tricky to make them look really nice. Uh, I will be trying to create uh, machiculations if I can uh, properly get that in. And of course those are pretty difficult. But here we can uh, see I use the tower to get back up on top of the wall, just like we would realistically. Yeah. Bit of trimming here and there. Bit of seeing the proper thickness. The uh, thickness of the wall is important too, of course. You want to make sure that there's enough space on either side uh, to do some actual walking, running. You, you don't want to fall off, basically. And there's Venus off in the background. Uh, I did speed all this up to, I think this part is times three speed. Uh, mainly because, of course, it's not exactly the most riveting part of any build. Uh, after these few sections, I was really itching to get creative, because, of course, right now, we are just placing blocks. So you'll see uh, here in a little bit something a bit more spectacular, I promise. <laughs> uh, it gets to a point where you realize that you've got a few too many pouches in your inventory. Oh, uh, and for me, that's when I've completely lost everything. Now here you see me, I'm kind of cleaning up the edges. And Venus has lost her boar. This is a common trope, actually. Moving over here, I kind of carved out a section. And uh, we'll be going in and roughly creating a gate. Uh, after I move some of this stuff out of our way, boom, 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 a little bit of pillars, it's thought about a more of an arch, but I decided that I wanted the gateways to connect fully, so just create a nice 3D rounding effect here on the sides, a little bit of nice Arnorian carved bricks. And then a bit of high elven flair. We have the gate. And of course, this is a work in progress, and I may come back to it later to uh, change it up. Now this is the part that I was really excited about. 
Uh, here you can see we're just kind of cleaning up these uh, columns. Yeah, you know, adding a little bit of variety, always a very important part of the build, even if it's so often overlooked. Uh, so you never want your build to be just flat walls, uh, or else it, it does get boring, honestly. So make your builds a little bit bigger, and then just add in these little touches. There we go. Now, upon looking around for a little bit, I figured that this was the perfect time to start with our main fireplaces. So, here we've got some iron bars to make sure that he can get out, but people can't stumble in. Because, of course, this is a mercenary's hangout. You know, we are... Even if we're not quite as uh, mercenary as we once were, this is probably quite a few drunken fools running around. Now, there's a lot of me toying around with the different designs. Hello, kitty. Okay. <clears throat> we are blessed by a cat. Now, the design process is always uh, a bit of a difficult one and for this I honestly suggest that you go into a creative world uh, I have my own kind of personal uh, testing ser well, not server uh, test world and honestly that saves so much time but for this I just kind of went at it organically, seeing how you know, the different pieces look together, how they functioned. And you note that I made, well, I'm making quite a few of these staircase blocks. That's going to be a pretty common trope. Because of course, uh, Elven architecture is just absolutely full of archways and very graceful, uh, or more graceful, I should say, uh, buildings that are really difficult to recreate in Minecraft. Uh, me fumbling with parkour. Yes, there's Venus in the background. Hello. I'll be enlisting her help in a moment or two to make a decision, but... For now, I'm just getting the columns up. Now, the important thing to remember, and... Well, the, the most important thing about this is that in real, real life, uh, these would be main load-bearing pillars. Now, you see I'm toying around with how these things fit together. Um, and, uh, well, I'm no architect, and uh, my friend Uther can attest this fact, uh, I do try. Here I grab some dirt for scaffolding. Honestly, dirt is so ridiculously helpful when planning out your builds. You always want at least one stack of it. Now here we have this beautiful design that I really enjoy at least, uh, which really helps to add just a small amount of 3D. So, there you go. And of course, more stairs. Now the fireplace is very important, as I blind myself by looking into the sun, uh, because, once again, this is a pretty uh, cold area. As, 
at the very least, we're looking at a pretty rough winter. Uh, and, of course, I need to explain what it is. Um, so we have a pretty rough winter, at least, oh, what, five or six months out of the year. I mean, we're north of the Shire, after all. So, oops. that is the only problem with working with stair blocks, is that it, they can be a bit finicky. But with the need to keep the castle warm, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. And a massive fireplace is probably the best way to do it in a medieval setting. Even a fantasy medieval setting. Fire hot. Well. Here I am trying out a slightly different style. And as I'm telling Venus, uh, these will continue to go up, and then eventually they reach, oh, well, they will go through uh, the next layer. Uh, so what will be eventually, I guess, the third floor, uh, where we'll have a lot of bedrooms for you know, different members of Nardu. <clears throat> And this is actually something that you can see historically, uh, is that people would build a large fireplace and then have the chimney going through the household. And this allows all that extra heat to go up and continue heating the house. Uh, we played along uh, with this also uh, in the Tower in the Bay. And there you see I made it flare out a bit near the top, uh, just for a little bit of extra load support. More brick, more stairs, so many stairs. Ah. I'm going to just finish this one up. And then, as I finish this one up, I c I'll cut away and finish the other one and then show it all off. Alright, see you in a moment. Let's take a quick look at everything that we've done here. You'll note so that we have our second chimney up and ready. Yes. Chimney almost seems improper for this. <laughs> These things are definitely massive. And as I was telling Venus earlier, I don't know if that quick clip of uh, chat was even visible. Uh, but these will be going up all the way through to the top uh, to help keep warming up our castle. Uh, I added these corner pillars here and there, and these little things right here is just sort of a decoration. Uh, tops of these. So, you might remember several episodes back, I talked about how one of the worst things that you can do to a build is to make it all out of one brick type and just have it be a big box. So this is all in the effort to kind of take these big open areas and kind of give them that 3D effect. Now, moving onward, uh, once I get this room completely finished, uh, all of this will swiftly disappear. And we'll be able to get a nice, proper look at it. I think I could probably remove this now, actually. Uh, 
all of this will also uh, be moved away. I want to create uh, up at that level, uh, there will be a section that comes up through this area, across, and back through. Uh, and there will be, it'll be kind of a, uh, a what's a good term, a, a loft? We'll figure it out. But there will be extra seating up there. Uh, long table in here. Maybe one or two over on the sides. And definitely several tables over in this area here. And there we have it, folks. Oh, it looks beautiful. All right. Well, I think this is where we're going to end it for today. Oh, wow, this is really coming along. And just, hmm, majestic. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining me. Once again, I am Lord Aramil. And this has been Let's Build Nardu Hall. I hope to see you all again next time. Farewell.